good evening so i was just finding a reason why you know uh, uh, you should become an agency owner and not you know remain freelancer because if you become an agency owner then probably you can give iphone as an giveaway right and i was also finding a reason why you should keep attending the wordcamp because that is the only day where you find that iphone is the only cheapest product in the market right so uh having said that uh, uh i decided this topic about doing uh, why to take the session on this topic is because last year when we sponsored wordcamp uh and i got a chance to interact with a uh, lot of developers and freelancers who are doing that full time and i found that there is a lot of potential uh, within them that but there is something that is you know stopping them doing and growing from where they are or they might have stuck somewhere and they are looking for some input so they were asking some random questions and i thought that why not to you know take a session on it and probably do it so i uh thank you uh, the work camp amdavad team who has actually accepted this topic and allow me an opportunity to you know speak in front of you and sharing my experience of last 17 years which i have been uh, you know acting as an business owner so can you go to the next slide yeah yeah so before i start with this this is just a little bit about me uh i am a founder and ceo of a company called zealous web and i have around like 17 years of experience in the web mobile application development and digital marketing services uh earlier this year i was lucky enough to you know attend two word camp in us one was in new york and another one is uh, in la and fortunately i got a chance to speak for maybe around 5 minutes on the concept called bar camp where you have to submit your topic and if you get a maximum vote then probably you are allowed to speak on it and it was a great experience and uh, apart from this as far as my educational background is concerned i am uh, a science graduate having a major in chemistry which was actually not by my choice but by force because i really didn't get a good marks in my board exams so that is the only option that i had and then eventually i found that i am more into the computers and i did a full time course for the 6 month in cdec amdavad which was primarily run by the company called gateway technolabs before 15 years and after doing in computers i worked for a company for around one and a half year and i eventually found that i am good at and or i like a more of a people management rather than uh, doing a programming myself so i decided to start my own agency i worked as an independent freelancer for 6 month and then eventually i found a need to build an agency and then i started apart from this i also did my post graduation diploma from nirmal university in the international business and as far as my personal life is concerned i am the youngest child although i do not look like young but i am the youngest one and i have one beautiful wife wives are always beautiful that is what we been told and uh sometimes the husbands are also uh handsome as well but uh apart from this i have two kids who keeps me busy with their avengers and want me to be a one of the character in daily and they keep on changing like that uh i like sports even though i am wearing the mats t-shirt i am not a baseball fan but i play a cricket like a baseball so i just put that i chose to you know select uh that particular photo for this presentation and i am a wicket keeper and part time batsman uh about my bowler as well uh moving to the next slide uh there are few assumptions that i have taken into while making this presentation to so make sure that you get the maximum value out of this and the first one is that i i hope that you are into the industry you are not just a trainee or maybe passed out from the college 
and you have maybe one or two years of experience working either as a designer or a developer or a QA as well. The second one is that you have burning desire to do something on a larger scale. So if you are happy with whatever you are doing right now and you don't want to take any extra burden or you don't have any goals to grow larger, probably this session would not interest you. But I understand because you are here, you have an interest to grow your company or maybe, you know, uh, whether you are working as a senior people in, in your organization or you are a freelancer or you are a small agency, you wanted to grow from where you are. The third assumption is that you like to work as a team player because when you think about growing an agency, I have talked with many freelancers and I asked them why you keep on doing this and they say that I, I like to work alone and I don't get gel well with the team. So probably that is another reason that I would say that I assume that you like to work within the team as well. Uh, you have a good business ethics right now and you are going to keep the good business ethics in the future as well. That is another uh, uh, assumptions that I have made. And you wanted to grow with WordPress community. That is another because we are all about talking about the WordPress. And I think that is the e we all know WordPress that, uh, either from the front end perspective or from the back end perspective. So we wanted to all build our agency around WordPress and also give back to the community when you get a success in your life, right? So these are the assumptions that I have made. Can you go to the next? So who is going to be benefited from this particular presentation that I'm making? So first and foremost is the full-time or part-time freelancers. I think they are going to enjoy this uh, session a lot because I have tried to cover a lot of things which is related to their future. The second people is the small startup agencies who are no longer a freelancer. They might have started their own company and they have two, three, five people working for them, but they wanted to scale from where they are right now. And the third people is the employee in the leadership role, because we have heard from a lot of speakers that they are already retired, and they are retired means their companies are still running, but that is because of the CEO and the COO in their companies, which means that if you are today a project manager or a project leader or a team leader, probably tomorrow, if your company owner decide to you know, get the retirement at the early life, you are going to be responsible for making all of this decision which I am going to present. So probably if you are not a freelancer and if you are working for an agency and at a senior position, then probably this presentation would interest you as well. So I pretty much, can I ask a question? How many of us are working for an agency as a leadership role and not a freelancer? Good, right. So I would like to start this presentation with the quote that says that there are two great things in a person's life, one when we are born and another when we discover why we are doing anything, why we are here today to attend the work camp. Or maybe a question that comes that why tomorrow morning at around 9 a.m. you are going to join your company or maybe if you leave your company around 7 p.m. in the evening, why you are going at home? If we can answer all of these questions, probably we would be in better position to decide what we wanted to do, right? So moving to that, I think I have few whys that would clear us that whether we should, why you should go for an agency ownership rather than doing a full-time freelancing. So there are eight reasons. And out of this, the first one is the heavy workload. How many of us has, you know, found ourselves uh, going on a vacation with the laptop and, you know, working maybe one or two hours when you are, you know, on a vacation, you are not supposed to be working, but you are answering your client's email, being a freelancer. Can you raise your hands? Is it very common? Yeah. Okay, let's forget about laptop. How many of us, as maybe you are on an international trip or on a vacation and you have an international roaming on, just because you don't want to connect with your family members, like parents, you, you wanted to call them, but you wanted to check your emails in the mobile devices because you wanted to make sure that you are not losing any money, right? 
So these are the situations where you find that you have a heavy workload and you should think about, you know, when you are on a vacation, you are actually vac enjoying a vacation and somebody else can take care of certain th tasks that keeps your clients on as well. The second is that freelancer business isn't scaling, which, which means that as a one person, you are really good plugin developers, but you can develop maybe uh, one plugin in three months time or maybe a two plugin in six or nine months time and also you can't build anymore because the two plugins that you have built you have to provide the support as well so your freelance business is not scaling and you wanted to scale it then that is another reason why you should go for an agency ownership rather than doing a freelancing the third one you are already collaborating with other freelancers. This is what I have heard because I ask questions that you are a developer and you are working as a freelancer. What do you do for your designing? And they say that we work with another freelancer who is a freelance web designer and they give us a part-time support. Now, if you are doing this very aggressively and not occasionally, which means that you are risking yourself because the availability of the freelancers are not, if they are not full time, then it's, it's on a risk. So probably that is another reason that rather than relying on somebody for a longer period, short term period, it's fine. But for the longer period, it would be good to employ somebody so that probably you have, an, you know, you can be having an accountability and you can answer to your clients as well. The fourth one is that your availability is about to change. Let's say you got married, maybe two, three years and you are going expecting a baby and probably you are thinking that now you are not able to give maybe the same amount of time that you are giving to your business uh, being a you know, bachelor or being a, you know, a non-parent. But now your ability is going to change. That is another way of thinking that now your personal time is going to be splitted and you should have an extra hand. Then that is another reason why you should you know, think about this. Next. Your client, client wants more. Everybody here thinks that we are the best freelancer in the world, which also your client thinks as well, and they want you to work on multiple projects. But because you don't finish your first project, you can't move to the second. Or even if you are a really good juggler, then probably you can work on two, but not on three or four or five projects. So if your client needs more from you, that is another reason why you should also think that it is a time to you know, build your own agency. You are a good team, you are a good at a team management. That is an essential part of you know, owning any agency that you have to be a really good team uh, management. Otherwise, what will happen that you will hire somebody, if you are not able to manage them, they will leave you and you will keep yourself finding busy hiring more and more people. So that is another important aspect that you have to be a good player. So if you think that you are a good team manager, then probably uh, there is nobody to you know, start your own agency. You love the business development. Most of the time, you will find that uh, the owner's life at the end, maybe after five years or six years, they find themselves more involved into the business development. And if you think that you love this activity, then probably you are also eligible for you know, uh, owning a company as well. And last but not the least, to work with an established agency. This is one of the one of the point that would probably interest some of the CEO or the agency owners as well. Because I have been, you know, agency owner for 15 years now. We get a lot of work requests. We many times tell no to the client because we don't know any small agencies that we can sub outsource those projects to. And if you are a freelancer, probably because it's not because of the capability of the freelancers, but sometimes it's the turnaround time that we expect on a project. Probably only a small web agency could help us. So if you build your own agency from the freelancing, probably you get a chance to work with maybe larger companies that is around you as well. So that is an entry point for you as that, that you can say that now I'm a small web agency owner rather than a freelancer and probably the companies would work with you and give you and you work as a subcontractor for them as well. So these are the reasons why you should start your own agency. So before we conclude whether you wanted to go for it or not, there are some pros and cons of starting your own agencies and I would like to go through that as well. So you have a team, you can't, if you don't have a team, uh, if you have a team, you can support and maintain your client as well. 
So, which means that you have five different products or maybe 15 different projects running. And if client, after the projects or product delivered, probably you have to give the support to the client. I think if you have a team, then probably you can put somebody to, you know, finish the task. So that allows you as an agency owner to, you know, support multiple clients. You can delegate the work that you do the best, which means minimizing your weaknesses, which me, the, the, the thing is that if you are, you as an individual cannot do everything, whatever, even though your requirement is that you have to do everything, designing, development, QA, and deployment, everything, but it doesn't mean that you are good at everything. If you hire somebody, if you become an agency owner, you only do what you are good at and other things you can always delegate to somebody else. And focus on what you do the best, so you play against your strength. A lot of time you have a strength, you have skills, but you are not actually able to utilize that because you find yourself busy with the other tasks. So in case you have multiple team members that supports you, probably you will be able to focus on something which you are good at. And when you are doing something which you are good at, probably the success ratio is very higher. So there are pitfalls of owning an agency as well. That you have to keep on recruiting people as and when project requires or somebody you know leaves your company. So you have to spend extra time, which as a freelancer you are not worried about because you don't have to look for anybody else. Everything that you are doing yourself. Trusting others with the work you do is very hard. A lot of people will keep on saying that I am doing freelancing for five years now because the level of quality of work that I can deliver to my clients, nobody else can do it. But if that is the case, then there is no like thousands and hundreds of freelancers out there or maybe wave agencies out there to serve the clients. So it's, it's more often like you have to find the right people and right potential and you can always train them. If you need to learn how to train them, you can probably go ahead and do it, but that's not the right excuse according to my experience that nobody else can do the similar work like I can do. And sometimes I have found myself that I had in this assumption or this, this philosophy when I was like two or three years of uh, uh, you know, running my agency that I can do things a bit and I hired people and I actually found that they are doing it better than what I was doing. So if I would have taken those decisions earlier, probably I would have grown much more time, uh, like uh, bigger than what we had in like two or three years of life, my agency life. So sometimes it's a reverse as well that somebody else can do better than what you are doing. If you run an agency, you never actually do the work you enjoy. Now, few people were, you know, asking me because somebody who might have come early in this morning, like around 8 a.m., I was just trying to stick the stickers in our booth. And as an agency owner, you probably I'm not supposed to do that, but I love doing it because there was nobody, somebody was needing an assistance there. So there is no fixed job profile for an web agency owner and you should have a no shame on doing anything that is required and that needs to be fixed. This is a thumb rule for owning any agency. And you might have found, maybe if you're working for a company, your project managers or maybe your directors might be doing something which they are not supposed to do, but they do it because it required and they love doing it, right? So that is another drawback of if you think that you wanted to do only for certain things, then you have to be proud of that. And the last is that Team means people and people means responsibility. As a freelancer, you are just responsible for feeding your own family. If you extend it, you might be you know, feeding maybe your elders who might need your financial support as well. But when you are owning an agency, you are no longer responsible for your family or extended family. You are responsible for each and every employee that you hire. Because every month, the, uh, the check that you pay that also helps that particular family as well. So you have to think from that perspective that you are adding this uh, additional burden that you will be responsible now for helping others as well. So I think these are the pros and cons uh, that I can think of. And now I believe that if we are still here and we are still interested to listen further, so I understand that we are now 
wanting to you know build an agency not tomorrow but maybe six months or maybe one year or two years down the line so if we are building it what i'm trying to do is that instead of making this a flat slides i have tried to build a little bit story so there will be a different stages of an agency life that i have tried to cover here and we will be looking at those points from those stages that we have experienced in the last 15 years so those stages are So there is a hand behind this. It's a lighter version, so you can't see it. But uh, there is a legal aspect that you have to look after. Uh, there will be a stage where you have to think about whether you need a co-founder or not. Then you need an office space. Then what should be your first hire? And what are the things that you need to consider by that? Then what are the things that you should celebrate as an agency? And then infrastructure, human resource, sales, and system processes and there is a last one going global so these are the different points that we will be looking at and let's look at them one by one okay so to start with uh, i think uh, the first there are various legal aspect that we should be looking at and the first is that the agency name now i have a recommendation that people i i see that people Keep the agency name which, you, which are very fancy one, which has no meaning. And if we ask them what is the meaning about this company and they don't know about it. What I try to pass here is that whenever somebody five years, ten years down the line will be asking you why you have named the company like this, you should have a vision attached to it. So whatever name you keep it, but you make sure that whatever culture you wanted to build in the company, you try and attach that with the brand name as well. The next point is the legal aspect, what kind of company that you wanted to build. There are two different kind of, I'm not going to touch in detail about this because I personally believe that you should hire a CA who is a better person who can give you a right suggestion which would save a lot of tax and you know save you from the lot of headache from the government agencies and kind of things. So I'm just giving you an overview that there is a limited liability companies and unlimited liability companies that you can build. In the limited liability companies, uh, unlimited liability companies, there is a proprietary ship firm, which is the easiest one. And there is another thing is the partnership firm, where maybe one or two people, minimum two people are, are required. So there is an unlimited liability companies. And in the limited liability, you have a private limited, the limited liability pa partnership firm, which is called LLP. And there is one more. Uh, company that is started like they they have root out the rule is out there in since 2013 that you can build one person company as well so one person company is similar to the private limited firm but there is only one person or one director required there there is no other required the only limitation with the one person part uh, 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 company is that it should not cross the turnover more than two crore rupees. So you can discuss these all details with your CA and all, but there are various kind of companies that you can form. But the easiest one here that you can start with would require a less documentation and would allow you to focus on your business. The next point is the co-founder selection. This is very much important because a lot of people think that right now I have skills to handle everything and probably being an owner of five, 10 or 15 people, you can do it all alone. But when you grow, when you have a 50, 60, or 100, or 500 people, you need other people to help you. So try and make sure that you, if you have a long-term vision, you try and go for a co-founder as well, who is equally interested and have a similar wavelength like you have. So there are various things that you should consider while selecting the co-founder and the first one is that you make sure that you are not trying to replicate the strength you have. If you are a really good developer, it is not a wise decision to partner with somebody who is good at development. Because you are already good at development, you can take care of those things. It's better that you complement each other. So go for a designer or somebody who is from the non-technical background, from the sales and marketing or kind of thing. So that would probably help you taking care of certain other departments which actually requires your attentions as well. Next. 
So next is the office space. Think about the office like, you know, you are a startup. You don't know how much you are going to grow. Go for an easy option that is in leasing an office because and go for maybe 5, 10, 15 people office space rather than investing more into it. Make sure that you find a location which is easy for your employees because even if you have to travel maybe five extra miles, that's fine. But if your employees can probably reach and have an access to the public transport and everything, which I found that are the constraint when you are hiring a people, probably you should be thinking about those aspects as well. And apart from this, you also look at the multiple ISP options as well. Because we are into the internet business, we have to make sure that we are not just stuck with one ISP, but we have multiple ISP options so that we always give and uh, have backup options for the internet connections as well. Next point is around six to 12 months of your agency life. And that is the first hire that you, and that is the most crucial according to me because they are going to represent the culture that you are trying to build. And that first hire that you make, make sure that you don't go for an experience, but go for a potential in the person. Which means the easiest thing in this world is to, you know, train somebody on the technology side. If you don't know something, you are going to Google it and fix the problem. If there are a number of videos available that you can learn from, there are a number of professionals who provide the training. Nobody provides the potentiality, right? If person has a potential, you can train them. So always, whenever you are hired, and specifically the first hire, must have a potential to grow with your agency or your vision, right? So make sure you do that. Uh, apart, and another thing which is uh, always interview with your co-founder or maybe somebody other than you who is a, having an equal eligibility to interview somebody because you don't want to you know, interview from a one perspective, always ask somebody else, what do you think about him? Let them ask the questions from the other end and have a discussion and then do the first hire. It's not something that you should you know, uh, neglect. Apart from this, a uh, lot of people, a lot of companies do celebrate a lot of things. There are minimum things that you need to you know, do is that everything that you do first has to be celebrated, which means that your first hire has completed maybe a first month in your company and you have to celebrate that with it. I don't know what scale you are celebrating it, but you have to celebrate it. The reason why we always found that anything that we achieve for the first time, if we celebrate it, probably it gives us a lot of confidence when we are doing something else for the first time because we have a history that we have achieved this in past. So always, always celebrate the thing. I'm not talking about the first anniversary, now, which is very common. I'm talking about every minor thing that happens in your company for the first time. Try to celebrate that as well. Okay, apart from that, then I actually have a red light, so I need to, you know, speed up the session. So I'm, I will go faster. So then it comes to like one or two years when you have already like 20 or 50 people, uh, then you have to go and buy another office, your choice, whether you wanted to rent it or whether you want to lease it. Make sure that you spend little amount of uh, money into the infrastructure side, but make sure that you have really good security and data protection. This is the stage where you will be working on multiple projects. If you ignore this fact, you may end up, you know, losing the clients or maybe losing your data and everything. So make sure you have a security in place and really good backup options. Apart from this, this is the time that the uh, human resource department that is very crucial because you will need to hire more and more people. You will find yourself busy in other tasks. You need a department who will be in bridge between the team as well as the owner. I, I, that, that is the single most uh, department in the IT field because we all are, the, the resources are the you know, assets for the company and if there is a no good HR department in place, probably there will be a problems with the trainings and everything. And then go to the sales and marketing part, how to you know, scale your company. 
there are various things one of the single most important and the most most modern thing is that the content marketing so i give you a couple of example like an seo moz who has you know did the content marketing for the three years of you know their initial company and then they have built the loyal audience around them and then probably you know everybody was following those articles and everything and they changed the brand name with the product that they launch and then they have those loyal customers who has actually purchased those products so doing and content marketing around the services and the product and plugins is the way to you know grow yourselves as well apart from this i think you need to hire the sales team this is the time where you have to hire maybe multiple of people who can probably help each other compete each other and probably bring more and more leads for your organization as well uh then you it will be a stage where you need a systems and the processes in place as an agency and as an agency you have to have those minimum five different things which is related to the crm or maybe your billing or project management or maybe customer support all of this system needs to be there and you need an sop for each and every department you have in your company whether it's a designing sales marketing qa you need your sops in place as well so having this said i think i have last uh, five different questions that i will quickly answer how to be successful while living agency life there is no shortcut you have to have put a lot of amount of effort time in the initial stage the next one how to decide what is ethical and not you are the your own boss you have to decide what is ethical and you have to keep make sure that you pass this message in the agency as well how do i change my persona for the agency's growth you, if you find as an owner some uh, negative or weaknesses in yourself probably you have to you know change yourself first then probably you will be overcome and grow your agency and how to balance the work life and leisure make sure that you become an agency owner because you want uh, to balance this work and personal life so don't forget about that and why and whom i am doing this this is what we i have started with and if you can answer this question probably you will be able to make the decision whether you want to leave the agency life with this said the last quote and the last slide that says none of us is as smart as all of us this is what i personally believe thank you